Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Homeworld Deserts of Crack. I was about to say Gardens of Crack. I keep thinking of Gardens of Kadesh for some reason. Doesn't even make sense for me to think of that, but I still keep thinking of it. I am thinking about getting a second cruiser, because damn, those things are good. Send your message. Runner copies. Runner copies. Hmm. Reading you, command. So, we have to just wait for a short period of time, hopefully, if we have any luck. And we will get what we wish for. 25% complete. Hang in there. The bearing. Hostile light attack vehicle detected. Hostile okay, we have incoming. Trackers assigned. Go for ranged. Op ready. Copy. Come on, come Target on, come on. Set. Green line confirmed. Hopefully we can catch them with their pants down, Receiving. so to speak. Copy. Target set. Reporting. Copy. Coordinate set. Uh, scavengers is F3, tactical, quick select, F2. Select all ground based combat units, interesting. Ready. Okay, Copy. come on. Clear to engage. Punch it, we gotta go. We'll get them engaged and then we'll pull them back. Yeah. Taking effective fire. Confirmed. Okay, this way. Armor You're literally ready. just gonna take. Ready, point set! Roger, moving to guard. Hostile strike craft down. Perfect. That was more than perfect. Receiving. Hostile sighted. Reading. Move order confirmed. Get us underway. We should really keep an eye on this site. Mobile. Strike copies. The data we've already collected is amazing. Hostile. Moving. Come on. Forward drive. Touch it. Clear up. The railgun is taking effective fire. Armored vehicle is taking fire. Hit that target with smoke. Come on. Damn it. Oh, oh railguns are hard to use. Keep steady. Watch the arm. Target locked. Moving. Order. Enemy light attack vehicle marked on approach. Got on. Steady fire. Yeah, get light attacks. We'll get them to deal with the tanks. Strike craft destroyed. Scan at 80%. Mm. Just a little longer. Mission pending. Reading. Op ready. Tracking hostile. Okay, get moving. I'm boost, boost, boost. Come on. We need to get a lot more of these. Light attack vehicle is under fire. Hostile range craft destroyed. That's it. Scan complete. We've got it. Enemy armor. Bearing designated. Okay, theoretically, it's just this and one down there. Reporting. Base runner is en route. Actually, you know what, base runner? Go ahead. Stay where you are. It seems runner. they're trying to make our way to us. Green line confirmed. New coordinates verified. Just because this seems like a safer Copy. route. On our way. Copy that. Coordinates confirmed. Right. Hostile light attack vehicle visually authenticated. I wonder if I can salvage your copy. Salvage the turrets. Hostile et strike craft down. Nah, it doesn't seem so. Okay. Well, it was worth a try. Ready, stand. 
Weapon range systems offline. Weapon systems online. Be advised. Carrier repair systems online. Armor systems active. Alert! The alert! The is taking fire. We've got hostile on set. Confirm visual. Attention! Come on. Salve your armor been engaged. engaged. I'm actually perfectly fine with the carrier being attacked, honestly. Fighter approach vector dialed in. Strike systems online. Ready to burn. I'm sorry, but that looks so cool. Go ahead. The turret is under fire. Fires do look interesting, though. <gasps> They're VTOL! Strike craft destroyed. VTOL craft are just so cool. I love VTL quite incapable craft. Anyway, we need five late assault. Tracking armored craft on approach. Five of those. Op ready. Mm. Armor ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Light one, attack 12. vehicle online. Capisi copies. Ah, uh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Light attack vehicle in service. They're just serving me so much better, personally. Light attack vehicle online. Another production cruiser. Light attack vehicle in service. Uh, go after that. Armor vehicle taking effective fire. Confirmed. Hostile light attack vehicle detected. Enemy railgun firing on friend. Reading. Target. Readjust. Move. Ah, oh, come on. Nope. Deploy smoke. Acknowledge. Enemy railgun eliminated. Strike craft taking effective fire. We've detected something. Can you confirm visual? Reading! Ah, no, come on! Ah! Alert. LAB down. I hate when they just sit there doing absolutely nothing after they've finished their task. Off ready. Armor copy. Target to front. Ah. Receiving! I literally lost basically all of my straight crap because of that. No self serve. Self preservation instincts at all. Fire. Yeah, Rachel can take a bit of fire. She's actually quite durable. Receiving. Armored assault online. Maneuver and engage. Receiving. Go for order. Go ahead. Ready. Copy. Target set. Actually, no, just stay where you are. Armored assault operational. Fleet group two assigned. Light attack vehicle online. Okay, well, I may as well just leave them to get the experience. Coordinates confirmed. Light attack vehicle in service. Armored vehicle is taking fire. Yeah, no, I'm not too fussed with the armored vehicle taking fire at this down. point. We'll upgrade the hangar. And the armored attack vehicles recharge rate. Vehicle online. Or should we upgrade the effects for us? Research completed. Hmm. We'll upgrade the effectiveness and then we'll go on to the recharge. Because that effectiveness boost, I think, will be spectacular. Reading. Control group one designated. Uh, eight, nine, ten. Well, like that's a round enough Coordinate number, control. I guess. Losing Research all of our advanced, u our elite units Armor is a bit annoying, route. to say the least. Ready. Green line confirmed. Move order confirmed. Op ready. I would like more than just the two of them, so... Make ready. First off, one more of them. So we actually have a full wing uh, per launch. And another three of those. Strike fighter ready oh, for we've reached fleet capacity. Oh. That doesn't feel like fleet Reading. capacity. Huh. Oh well. Strike fighter coordinates dialed in. Attack vector dialed in. We're in the pipe. Op Railgun online. Sorry, I'm just gonna watch this.
Well, these move, attack, return to carrier. Railgun operational. <laughs> Oh, we've been attacked! I guess we'll just sit here. <laughs> wow, I... Sure. Uh, that's what I'd do if I was attacked by a bunch of fighters. I would just go, I don't know, we better just stay here. Control group three designated. confirmed. Op ready. Op ready. Railgun reading you. I should actually make group four... Like, uh... Well, group nine is right now at this rate. Or ten is, I mean. ready. Control group four designated. Receiving. Go for armor. So we'll Ready. do that. Move out. All you guys are basically congregating one area. Science officer on route. We'll make it easier by going like that. But seriously, the repair ability is really quite Good useful. Uh... Hmm. Oh yeah, I was gonna go with the recharge ability. Ready. Reading. Op ready. Move order confirmed. Move out. Armored assault Ugh. modifications carried out. Okay, Reading. good. Armored assault vehicle hull durability would be very nice. Seeing as how we have mostly of them right now. So I think we do have more. Uh, yeah, we do have more armored soul than we have things. Eight, twelve, fifteen. Cool. I'm just used to armored very round numbers. But that's me right. out. Make ready. We don't need the fire hull really right now, to be honest. Strike copies. Armor, go ahead. Standing by. We're moving. Railgun reading you. Right. This hill here On our way. is the best, best... Whoa. Reading. Coordinates confirmed. Go ahead. As I was saying, that hill there seems to be the best highland reading. that you can find. Go for ranged. New heading set. Green line confirmed. Reporting. Copy that. Coordinates confirmed. Op ready. What we'll do is we'll get... Once they're in position, I should say. Op ready. Get us underway. Right. Receiving. We'll get these guys Move to hit. Intercept. Once they've hit, they will run straight away with boost active. So we'll hit, drag them in, boost activate, and pull out. Go, go. Go for armor. On our way. Ready for orders. Hostile strike craft down. Fire. Armor vehicle taking effective fire. Move order confirmed. Enemy armor Operate. disabled. Reading. And push way. forward again. Op ready. Railgun reading. And Track again with the same now. thing. Push in. Hit. Push the way. Cool. Armor ready. Oh. That was my only intelligent for a little second. Good job. May as well Green actually just peek them over the ridge. Go for armor. Armor is on route. Go for range. Tracking target. All operators alert. Hostile approach confirmed. We copy. Board has been updated with hostile trackers. Ready. This is Rachel going. Strike craft. New heading. Destroy. We're cleared. Under fire. Okay, good job. This scan is unusual. I've never seen anything like it. I need to start breaking down the data immediately. Understood. Great job out there. Thanks. 
We have successfully completed our scan of the Kalash Rack, but it may only be a matter of time before the Gaussian carriers vector onto our position. Okay. I suggest we get moving before then, then. Intel, I've fed the scan data into the computers and added my spectrum and IR reading. I'm heading back to the Capisi now. Copy that. We're all eager to hear the results of your analysis. I bet. You're gonna like this. Oh. Person log, Captain Roman Sajet, Expedition Carrier Capisi. These sandstorms are taking a toll on the old girl, but she's a hell of a ship. We're managing well, considering the haste with which we launched. Our lead science officer, Rachel, is analyzing the artifact we found. She's eager to take risks, which I wouldn't have wagered on after our first meeting. She's also driven as hell. She's giving the intelligence officer fits. My respect for her grows daily. As for the Galcian, their hover technology makes them faster and more maneuverable than our units. They're better equipped for desert conditions, too, which is no surprise. But their hit-and-run tactics, which I've seen before, always leads to something much larger and more dangerous. It's only a matter of time before we are truly tested. Hmm. Well, PC systems are now running at full capacity. We have a total power of three, and we have uh, 490 thousand, uh, million litres of uh, fuel and 16.39 million litres of water. Anomalous site found. Science officer suggests investigation. Local Galician forces have detected our presence. Heavy resistance is expected. Hmm. Also, we're starting to approach halfway of the boiling point. So that's not exactly good. Anyway, I'll leave it there and I'll send you over to Future Monkey, who will read! Read! Probably very pure, poorly, like usual. <sighs> Such a failure you are. <sighs> well, that's a bit mean, past Monkey. I'm so sorry that I can't read. We are both dyslexic, you dickhead. Anyway, uh, the Kith Nabal. Not much is known about Kith Nabal prior to their dramatic emergence from the end of the Heresy War. There are a few sc uh, scattered mentions of them and records in the majority of the Kith, uh, Kithid from their first epoch. But the name Nabal arises from the terms of tradesmen or heretics. Kith Galizan were particularly ver vehement, vehement in the prosecutions of families under the Nabal flag. I don't think I've actually encountered the word vehement. I'll have to have a look that up there. And there are some e there is some evidence that the Gleason's pros uh, prosecution, which drove Nabal to their hidden valley refuge, blasted into the edge of the Krakid's tiny mountain ice cap. But those loose facts are all that we have when that we have when it comes to understanding the origins of the per this powerful kith. Kith Nabal itself seems uninterested in clearing up the distant path. Uh, clearing up. Okay. And the hard facts only begin to appear and began to appear in recent years, directly before the Nabal intervention, when the Kith moved to the end, uh, moved to the end of the Heresy Wars and established the Diamid. In those three centuries of chaos, Kith Nabal had almost completely cut off the contact with the rest of Karak. Dealers and refugees who incidentally stumbled into the valley were welcomed with open arms. Oh, that's nice. And given a place to make their new their lives anew, there is no records of any rejecting this offer. Hmm. So they were uh, not quite sure what alternative they might seek. Small parties, always made up of families with direct fire, f fell fealty to the Kissa, were sent out occasionally to bring back texts that were in danger of destruction. Occasionally, because the cities that held them were being uh, consequently sacked, sometimes these parties would even spirit away scholars in prison for heresy. It wasn't until the Ifrit Nabal Sa came to the heads, and secret the secret of Kith that had less isolated philosophy began to take hold. 
Ifrit realized that the wars were dangerously close to destroying the last of the infrastructure that kept the bulk of the Krakid peaceful alive. Fields were being burned, dams demolished, and sand traps torn away simply to deprive the enemy of valuable resources. Under such an onslaught, the days of uh, civilian civilization on Krakid were numbered. Though, the de though declared pacifists, much of the knowledge discovered and hoarded by Krak Nabal had direct military application, and so, when Ifrit Nabal Sa finally proposed the intervention of to his people, he took only a few years for a military force to be assembled. The Nabal had been keeping the secrets of explosives, steam, and refining more than 100 years, and when they arose, they swept out uh, from their hidden city of Ter like a gleaming servants of the Jaku, Jakul himself. Steam-powered vessels towed cannons, bringing them down the walls of Disponic Kithid, while handfuls of soldiers carried repeater rifles wearing hardened armour moved to rout the marauding armies twenty times larger than themselves. Huh. Ifrit Nabal Sa spoke of every holding village and city his uh, army liberated, and offered those people all the fruits of the Nabal science and technology, if they would but lay down their arms and end the pointless destruction. Unlike the major powers in the Heresy Wars, Nabal Sa did not demand reunification of former Kithid ties. He asked that he was an... All of that he asked for was an ending. The lesser Kithid, brutalized by nearly 300 years of war, gratefully appreciated his terms. And soon the Nabal army had grown 50-fold. Oh! With Kithid, whose only desire was to end the heresy wars any way they could. And, in three short years, they had done it. Ifrit Nabal Sa's last act was uh, stepping down as Sa was established... was to establish the Diomed and Tyr as a, pa a place where all Kithid, powerful and meek, could gather to resolve their disputes and select political policy for all crack. In the decades that followed, Nabal, Nabal rebuilt the damaged infrastructure of Krakid and improved upon it with, no, with their no longer secret construction and metallurgy technologies. Some... any minor Kithids were appreciated and were accepted in Nepal if they had simply wanted to learn new crafts and trades. These same Kithids were then allowed to go on their way to choose. Well, are allowed to go their way if they chose. Huh. And many of the major industrial kith in the modern world began under Nabal's wing. By the time of reason, 200 years later, kith Nabal had replaced the perilous sand uh, sail routes with to the uh, south with rail-mounted steam cars, and had given kith Paktusa to the southern polar region a permanent per, uh, presence in the Diomed. Keith Nabal seemed content to fade slowly into history for many years, but recent stresses on Krakid society, mainly the encroachment of the desert sands on many settlements in the north, have increased the, increased the hostility from Kreith, uh, Keith, uh, sorry, and the increased hostility from Kith Galizan seems to have seared, steered the Nabal back to the forefront of politics. Nabal has formed uh, permanent alliances with both the Sajet and Suban uh, Kithid, and has taken the lead in, organization, in organizing both expeditions to the Jiraki Anomaly. Financial, an an uh, uh, financial analysts have noted that the heavy Nabal investment in aerospace research uh, with special interests and proposed uh, facilities in lower Karakid orbit and beyond, regardless of the detailed plans, it is very secreted. They are a very secretive kith. Uh, it should be clear to anyone on the political screen that Nabal has always had an eye in the future and a deep commitment to putting the uh, a deep commitment to being on the cutting edge and shaping the future. Kith Pak 2 
Prior to the year 462 KDS, Kithpix II was one of the major farming Kithid, living uh, on the slopes above the Salt Sea. On the year their most uh, famous leader, Majar Paktu, was born, the long rift between the religious leaders of Keith Sidim and Keith Gleason, which were uh, which were then the most powerful Kithid in the north, finally became the, the unbra an unbridled divines in 462. And bridgeably divided, sorry, my mistake. In 462 KDS, the famous Sadim Council announced that the new dogma, the traditional Sadim cosmology, which once held that all Kithid on Karach were exiled from a heavenly paradise, was abandoned. The truth, uh, according to the procla proclamation of 60, uh, 42. Ugh, I'm sorry. 462 was that the Sadim were of divine origin. All other Kithid were native to Krach and therefore inferior. Their blood tainted by the corrupted sand. Oh, okay. Uh, in accordance with the new dogma, many cruel pogroms were passed against the non Sadim Kithid. Uh, the people known as the Greta Dam. Or sand people were far from the harshest of these measures were, was the Clean Water Act, which forbade non Sadim Kithid from living on the headwaters of the river or stream, lest they foul the water which the Sadim downstream would have to drink. Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of families were displaced by Sadim Templemen returned uh, turned out of their ancestral homes and made to march down street carrying as much of their former lives as they were as they could. In four eighty eight KDS the Kith Pak Tu rejoined the ranks of the disposed. Hmm. At the same time the temples of the neighbouring Kith Gleason were had become obsessed, okay. With the sins of pride and by the redemption of Krakid through suffering, the Sadim made obvious targets of the seminars by the Gleason noble holy women. For every Sadim sin of pride, they said, a more brutal, excruciating ex exp ex uh, exploitation? No. Expedition. Oh, I'm sorry. Was demanded by the gods of Karach, Lether Kithid in the north, already suffered under the weight of the Sadim oppression, were often willing to join their holdings to the Gleason rather than see them taken by the Sadim. Many welcomed Gleason soldiers and templemen to their uh, holdfasts, only to find themselves held at sword point and made to watch as their sinful books. And belongings were burned to appease the gods. Heavy tributes and of both food and fodder were demanded by the Gleason armies, and appealing uh, sacrifices were sometimes demanded. Appalling sacrifices were sometimes demanded by the Gleason priests, who saw no reason why the pure of heart should not should suffer alone. Clashes between the Sadim and Gleason holdings intensified. Over time, even the remote Kithid were forced to choose sides. Both great Kithid were too powerful for any smaller Kith to challenge uh, on its own. Caught between the proverbial rock and a hard place. The Gadim were finally ready to try the unthinkable, crossing the great bandy desert in the south, looking for new land. By this time, Mejir Paktu had become the Paktu Kithsa, though the first migration had not been entirely his idea. It is certain that fate of all people that all ah, it is certain that the fate of all the people of Keith Paktu was in his hands. It is difficult for us to imagine uh, today what he must have felt as his people built the first great sailors on the edge of the desert. Though Many crack believe, cracky believe that there are, there might be arable land 
and the southern pole. No one had ever attempted to cross the Great Bandit, Bandit Desert. Uh, returning to te return to tell the tale. The only confirmation that the land to the south and the southern desert desert came from a mad manani travelers rambling about the endless seas and grasses that touched the sky. The migration offered only slim hope at best. So slim that no kraken uh, dared to risk it until there was no hope at all. Uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Nearly 50 cathed set out, cathed set out on, from the plain of Albegido. Albegido. Al Albegadio. Albegado? Okay. And 490 KDS and sailed into the Great Banded Desert, sweeping over the burning sands on the winds of the celest uh, seasonal storm from the Chokmahot. Uh, by the time the men, women, and children of the First Migration reached the shore of Honon Mountains, only 17 families were left. Ooh. And all of them are lost weaker members on the journeys. Still, more died as they struggled over the Hunan without anyone to guide them to the easiest path. They lost many uh, to poisonous waters, rock falls, thirst and lizard bites. As the story goes, many of the firsters fell in despair among the burning red canyons of Hunan and did not want to go on, despite whether he had been the leader of the beginning of the migration. Major Pacto was definitely a leader on that day. He stood at the head of the column and pleaded with the people to continue. I can smell the sea, he said. It's only a little farther. The people did not believe him, and fewer more turned to start the hard trek back uh, to the sand sailors, still docked at this desert shore. But, as legend has it, at that moment, a bird appeared in the cloudless sky above them. A sea spirit circling against the hot desert sun. Or a hot sun. It's not actually in the desert at this point, so... Err. The Kithid at the first migration followed the sea spirit and... Major Pacto against the mountains. And when they stood at the last uh, red hilltop, they... We're looking down upon the rolling breakers of the Great Grey Sea. Straight away, that expanse of water was named the Majran Sea, after the man who had brought them there. I'm so sorry, that chair is very creepy. Uh, the people of the First Migration settled on the shores of the Majran and were presumed dead by many in the north. For almost two years, it took to build up their homes and holdings. In the spring of the third year, however, Major, Major Pacto and a group of picked, picked volunteers attempted another crossing uh, through the Great Bandy Desert to take back the, world, the words of a new land in the north. Or to the north, even. Where so many lived in this nightmare of war and oppression. Major Pacto did not survive this uh, survive the return, but seven of his followers did. These seven Pacto Keithsmen passed through the Northlands on foot. Damn. Okay. Taking word of the new lands with them everywhere they went. Once that word spread, there was no stopping it. Dozens of families built sand sailors on the famous plain of Albegido. Abigado. I'm sorry. Every year, trying to escape the heresy wars and the madness of the Sedim and Galizan masters. Alas, the Sedim and Galizan were not quite finished with the people who escaped their tyranny. Though they ignored the migrants for many years, both Sedim and Galizan were lost many... I uh, lost many... hectares of holdings by, to the war. By 650 KDS, it occurred uh, to both of the great northern Kithid that many of those who fled to the north, were, the south, were considered 
their vassal clans and by treaty still owed them lands and tributes. They were at least three major attempts to assault the southern lands in uh, 652 to 700 KDS. The last of these was the most successful. The army of Liam Galizan actually arrived on the pass of the Haronon Hon Hanon Mountains was intact in the spring of 689, 698, sorry. Uh, KDS, ready to subdue the unruly Kithid in the southern lands under Kithsa. On the day, Kim Pakto, the grandson of Ma Major Pakto and Pakto Sikithsa, uh, arrayed an army of th 30,000 swords on the shore of Majran. Every one of them who wore the colours of Keith Pacto and every banner, st every standard banner carried the flag. These are my people, Kim Pacto said, and this land is ours. You have no vassals here. Badly outnumbered and facing a fresh and well support supplied army, Liam Galizan nevertheless uh, led his troops to the battle. Very few of the Galizans who survived, who followed him that day escaped with their lives, though they killed thousands of Pacto. The southern Kithsa eventually prevailed, and no such crusade was ever attempted again. To this day, the flag of Pacto is white, and the colour of the colour of the sand sails which carried its people across the banded desert. Oh. And blazoned with the sun sea, uh, stained red by the blood of those who died in search or in defense of freedom. Silhouetted against that sun is the shape of the sea spirits, an eternal symbol of hope and faith. Pacto believed fiercely of an, uh, believed fiercely in independence and the spouses, priests, dictators, and dictators. Its people are optimistic, innovative, and venturesome. When things are at the darkest, someone uh, will always repeat the Keith's motto. I can smell w uh, the sea. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that does look like a sun. I will I will say that. It does kind of look like a sun. Kind of upside down in my personal opinion, but yeah, I will we'll say that looks like a sun. Oh my goodness. Wow, we do have quite a bit to go, don't we? I, I don't know. Uh, tell me if you think I should continue with the rest of the families. I'm finding them fascinating, but damn, there's a lot of reading for that. There is a lot of reading for the families. Because the next one is that long, and then the one after that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, what am I actually... Uh, hmm... Yeah, tell me if you want me to read the last six families, because bloody hell, this is getting a touch long. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there, so until next time, all the best, and I hope you enjoyed.